people have been asking me what I think, whether this is the mark of the beast going on, what's happening now all around the world, you know, the craziness, the control of the enemy or the, the Masonic uh, witchcraft in the politicians, in the uh, media, the, the big push for the, you know, the... the um, the Jabberwocky, this thing here, I, I got to be careful, you know, if I say the wrong words, YouTube will just ban me or ban me a uh, video, so anyway, they're asking me, they don't know, everybody's uncertain, no one really knows, even the Christians are freaking out, they're all lining up to get it, here's a couple of pictures here, I, I took this picture the other day, I just got to put me two bobs worth in, God's give me the order to, uh, do it to just say have me say or have a say and this is what he said to me and now son of man be not afraid of them neither be afraid of their words though briars and thorns be with thee and thou dost dwell among scorpions be not afraid of their words nor be dismayed at their looks though they be a rebellious house he's talking about the believers he's talking about the religious and then in Ezekiel 2, 7, And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. You know, he's, if, if I don't do it, I'm the one in trouble. I, don't, I didn't want to say anything. I, I mean, I'm not staying right out of it, but i got to say this. So this is because I'll show you why. I mean, I... Right in the middle, right in the CBD of Hobart in Tasmania, this this is there. So this is like June, July, August, two months after the the, the dark mofo Satanists had their uh, whatever you call it, their ungodly mess, and this is still right up at right at the end of the mall. And look underneath, look what's going on. They've turned this into a um you know, a clinic to uh, you know what. And um, this is what happens with cursed ground. This is what happens when the devil takes ground, the ground's taken until the Christians take it back. If we don't pray, if we don't go in there, rebuke, you know, cast out, it's the same with demons in people. If we don't, you know, take that ground by force, by the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, by the authority, power, and the anointing that he's given us as newborn believers. If we don't use it, the devil stays, and he stays in us and around us, in the street, in, in the uh, buildings, anywhere the devil's been put, the Satanists or whoever's left curses, there's been wickedness happen in houses, you know, and the demons, it's opened the door for demons to stay. They don't move. They become territorial and they hang around. And you, the, you can only move them by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ that he's given us and the name of Jesus, like I said before, and with force. we got to force them out. we got to expel them. <clears throat> and it says, These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out demons. You know, the believers are the ones casting out demons. The unbelievers and the, the lukewarm, they don't even know. They know nothing. They don't believe. And here's my point right now. This is the curse under the the curse. You know, the curse, the curse ground's bringing more curses. And this is a church in Moona, in Tasmania, in Hobart, in Tasmania, that's full every day, the, the, the head of this church, who's the head of the Australian Christian churches in Tasmania and a part of that group, has allowed these his place to be f for this, for money, and whatever reason, whether it's fear or, I mean, it's so full of doubt and a lack of faith that God and Jesus, the blood of Jesus, can do anything. But He's turned His place into a into a clinic for this for the Jabberwockies, you know. And uh, this car park, Tuesday to Saturday, is full every day, chock a block, totally chock a block, and they're they're lining up for it, and it's a disgrace, you know. In um. I'll get into some scripture now, and I have, have to say something, and I know this is the war. God told me I've been fighting against the Satanists for, what, three, 
three, four, five years, however long, or even way back, you know, for 15 years when I put up the exposure on the Rosicrucians, they told me to, in the spirit realm, I got the uh, the devil worshippers, the Rosicrucians came in the night, astral projector, told me to get me videos off YouTube, and anyway, I never, that really sort of pushed me to really have a go at them because... I knew I was over the target and I knew if God's told me to do this, then he'll bless it and he has. And uh, and I know when I pray, when I do um, warfare against the enemy, I can hit really hard now. I can do so much damage and, and they don't like it and I know that. But it didn't come overnight. But now these people in the church, in the... <laughs> that call themselves Christians are dishing out this um this so-called cure and it, why are they lining up? Don't they trust the blood of Jesus? Are they so full of fear? Here's, here's the um, scriptures here. You know, it says in Exodus 12, 23, this is the blood of Jesus. This is what, you know, God was going to smite the firstborn of the uh, Egyptians. And he says, For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in un under your houses to smite you. In other words, the blood of Jesus, that's Old Testament. New Testament means the blood that's on us protects us you know, shuts the doors, there's no access, no open uh, entry point where the enemy can come in and and destroy us. And in Exodus 11, this is just before that scripture, it says, this is what God's told Moses, and there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. This is the last plague of the plagues of Egypt. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that you may know how the Lord does put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. So Israel was about 80 k's from Egypt, but all them plagues, not one of them landed on them people because God separates his people from the from the trouble, from the strife. If you believe, if you got faith, God will separate it. God's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And uh, it says without faith it's impossible to please him, you know. So when we seek him, when he, he rewards us. And when we got faith, he rewards us, you know. So that's that's what we why we gotta trust God. We've got to put our faith in him. We've got to trust him. What good is even going near him? You know, repenting or praying or if we don't even believe. We we don't. And it's lukewarm and now God's he's uncovering this all around the world. All the lukewarm Christians, all the all of those who, who don't believe, don't trust, have no faith. God's separating them, the chaff from the wheat. The tares from the wheat, the goats from the sheep. And and these places are now under judgment. And it's obvious. You know, that they're using this as a covering to hide behind because of their fear of death. It says, you know, in Hebrews chapter 2, 14 and 15, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, in other words, he became a human, flesh and blood, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. So Jesus overcame death for us and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Now all the believers, all the world's going after it, or a lot of them, most of them, their fear and death, and whether they say, oh, no, I'm doing it because I don't want this one to get COVID or pass COVID along, I'm actually just saving the world, you know, or I have to go and visit so-and-so, I've got to go overseas, or they want me to do it at my job. They're not thinking that. It's for a morsel. 
they're selling their birthright like Esau did. It says, you know, when Jacob Jacob was making a stew, Esau come in from the field and said to Jacob, feed me. Feed me with that stew, I'm faint. And then Jacob said, sell me your birthright then, even today. And, and Esau said, Behold, I'm at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do unto me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day, and he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. The birthright is the firstborn, the birthright is the heir, the birthright that, that um, put him ahead at, at, to be the head and not the tail. And uh, he said, I'm hungry. I, I don't care about birthright. I need it right now. I need whatever right now. And then it says, if we go into, well, we'll keep going, Genesis 25, 34. Then Jacob gave Esau the bread and stew of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. And then in Hebrews 12, it talks about it. It says, talks about Hebrews 12, 16, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward, when he was would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. And this is what I believe, that people are saying, where are we on the timeline? Where is this in the Bible? This is affecting the whole world. It should be in the Bible. And, you know, you can compare it, like I said, Matthew 24, I think it's Mark 14 or and um, Luke 21 or the end time scriptures or when Jesus is explaining what's happening in the end. But this is where I think we are. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it says, chapter 2, verse 1, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together under, we, under him. Jesus is starting to gather the true believers. Jesus is separating the profane, the, the ungodly, the lukewarm, the slothful, the, the sleepy, the lazy. You know, he's separating them. And this thing that's going on, this thing here, it's... a. Uh, and people that are running to it, lining up, especially the believers, because they're fearful, their fear of dying, they got no trust in God whatsoever. That you know, most of the church is just a a, a con, a scam. A, 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 most of the people are religious. They got things pumped in their head. They don't read their Bible. They don't fast. They don't pray. They got no faith. And God's sick of it. God wants a church without spot or wrinkle. So he's separating all the stuff that's offensive, which is a lot of them, even the ones behind the pulpit. They're some of the worst coming out of Bible schools, all this head knowledge, no power, no authority, no anointing. They just parrot off the stuff they've been pumped in into their heads. And, you know, they're using, they're, they're using the people of God as merchandise, like it says in the New Testament, in the book of Peter. They make merchandise of them. And, uh, and I know that this place down here, They've just done a heap of um, renovations, and it's it's about this. It's all about this. Why else would you let you know the world come in and um, fill your bloodstream with um, foreign objects? I mean, Jesus said, or God said, the life is in the blood. And what what life is this? Is there um, you know things in that? It, it's it's bad. It's really bad. What's in it's really bad, and they haven't looked. They don't care. And what what um, you know, how how is this making other believers think that it's okay? That's the filthiness of it. That's what's got me uh, stirred up. And others, others can't believe it. So many people are leaving, walking out. They're the ones that are awake. And if they're, and some of them aren't only half awake, but at least they're going into the wilderness to find God. You know, it talks about 
Jeremiah 17 5 thus says the Lord curse be the man that trusts in man makes flesh his arm and whose heart departs from the Lord curse be the man that trusts in man you go and keep feeding off the same fella or people that have given you nothing in 10 20 years or 5 10 and you're still not going anywhere and you keep doing that every Sunday looking for something new you're just you're like a zombie already and you're trusting in them for the truth and they haven't got the truth in them and makes and then says and makes flesh his arm which means you're leaning on the worldly stuff you're leaning on the things that man gives you whether it's finances whether it's you know medicine and I'm not against medicine and I'm not against you know the jab or jabs either because I just got a, a a uh, tetanus shot there not long ago because I got bit by a dog, and uh, which was just a crazy thing. Couldn't believe it. Snuck up on me. Been wanting me for ages, and it really sunk his fangs in too. And I turned around. And he was taken off already, so I couldn't even get a good swing at him. But anyway, that's what happened. So to make flesh your arm which means you're relying on man. Trust in man, make flesh your arm, and whose heart departs from the Lord. It's all about the faith and the trust. As we get get older and move forward, you know, we, we build upon the faith. We build upon the trust as God squeezes us, refines us, stretches us. We start building on them things, and he waits till the very last minute before he, you know, usually opens the door or usually removes the trouble or the tribulation or whatever we're going through. But that's the way he works, and it's all to squeeze us and all to refine us and prune us and get us ready for the battle and get us strong, to endure hardness as good soldiers of Christ, to, to, to get us to um, not worry about the, um, you know, to know that there is deliverance coming no matter how bad it looks, and that's where he wants us. But uh, when we start trusting in man, we're in trouble. So here we go, here's, here's back to Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2. That you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. The day of Christ is right at hand now. I mean, I don't believe in pre-trib rapture, I believe in post-trib rapture. But this is a good... Um, like practice run for the enemy, or like I said again, the high level Masons, the Satanists, the uh, the the New World Order. They've been planning this for hundreds of years, thousands of years. The devil's pushing so hard, it's unbelievable. It says he's come to come down with great wrath, for he knows his time is short. Things are upset. You know, the last four years, things their their plan was ruined, and now they're back. It's like what happened down here in Tasmania when the Satanists put the crosses upside down. You know, I knew it was like they pushed too hard. It woke up the ones that even some of the sleepy ones all of a sudden were woke up and started praying and then there was more resistance on top of them and now they're gone. They're stuffed. They got no power at all left. You know, they're just running like a dog with its tail between its legs and because they're... Um, connected with this highest level they're gone too it's the whole thing's playing out on this plane where it's been play it's played out in a second heaven and finished in in the, the throne room of god god's it's god's turn now second heaven battle's got to finish and down here it's got to finish and it's it's moving through the motions and it's gonna finish and things are gonna you know get get back to normal so here we go again. You be not soon shaken in mind, but or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The falling away, he's talking about believers. 
you don't fall away from something if you're never there anyway. So the falling away is happening now, and God's using this, even though we're, everybody's looking at what the devil's doing. No one's looking at the next level. What are you doing, God? No one's even asking. They're all freaking out instead of praying and fasting and say, show me, God, show me, God. They're all stuck on the devil's doing this, the devil's doing that. Ah, oh, I'm going to go mad. i just got to go and hide under the bed or hide in the chook shed, you know, wherever, instead of looking, if you if they, if they you look up, you know, and see a bit higher, see what God's doing. Look, look how he's separating everything. He wants the people of God to be separate. He, he can't let, let, let us all, you know, <coughs> be joined together. What's, it talks about the tares. When, <coughs> when man slept, an enemy came in, so tares amongst the wheat and then went his way and then the, the fellas woke up and he sees the tares that look exactly like the wheat in the um, in his wheat crop and he says, what do I do? And, and he says, do I pull them up? And then God says, no, you can't pull them up lest you pull them up. When you, you pull up one clump, you're pulling up, the wheat as well. You pull out the whole lot. You couldn't. You can't separate them. He says, "Leave them until the end, and I'll send me angels in. They'll pull the tears, separate the tears from the wheat. They'll bind them into bundles and cast them into the fire. This jabberwocky is going to cast so many into the fire. This poisonous stuff that they're dishing out is going to separate so many. They're going to be crying out." Whether God even hears them now, I think they're gone. I really believe they're gone. I believe, you know, that that chapter's over. The new chapter's begun. They've totally rejected any um, faith and hope and trust in God. And uh, now, you know, God's just like he did with Esau. He, he, um, it says, I don't know if I read this again, read it before but I'll read it again lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau for one morsel, morsel of meat sold his birthright for you know how that afterward when he would have inherited the blessing he was rejected for he found no place of repentance though he sought it carefully with tears. God just said that's it, you've done, you've finished you put your trust in man I mean and there's another scripture here that I've got that it's, talks about how, um, yeah, here it is here, just before them two scriptures, Hebrew twelve fifteen. looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, you know, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. We're not talking about roots of bitterness, but it says, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. We can fail of the grace of God. Once This once saved always saves a total lie. People are hopping around, following, uh, jumping up and down, hallelujah, following this Hollywood Jesus, following this prosperity Jesus, wants us rich, wants us famous, wants us, you know, wants to give us exactly what the devil wants to give us. It's me, 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 I, 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 gimme, gimme, gimme. We're not to follow him for an advantage. We're to follow him because he's the one who created us. He's got the best for us. He wants to stand us in righteousness and truth. He wants to, you know, put us, exalt us down here so when we get to the, you know, the third heaven or heaven, we, we can be, you know, we can have the treasures, we can have the um, everything, we, we can have the blessings, the favour, the grace, all in the third heaven. We just got to get through this one and try to, you know, improve ourselves by the Spirit with righteousness, holiness, truth, grace, you know, peace, just to become a better person, not to just want, 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 gimme, gimme, gimme. And that's that's the trouble with the church. That's what they're preaching, and that's what this mob's preaching down here, and that the, all of them, all of them, and they're failing. They're, they're under judgment. God's brought judgment to them, and Second Thessalonians 2, 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of, of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. We're just talking about 
it's all revealed to those who can see the Masons, the Satanists, the New World Order, the, the devil worshippers. You know, they're the ones that are running Hollywood, running the mainstream media, running big business, running the judicial system, running the, the, the uh, cops, running even the churches. They're running everything and God's saying, come out of it, come out of it, my people. And, it, and then the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or all that is worshipped so that he as God sits in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. You know, this once people seem to take this jabberwocky, that's it. They don't, they're not interested in God. I mean, there's a, there's a thing about... Um, a uh, God gene that was back in 2010 or 11 where they've separated a gene that they and made sort of a, a jab, a walkie to, um, for religious fundamentalists to stop them from chasing after God and doing, you know, acting crazy, well, crazy in their eyes. Anyway, we'll keep going. Second Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians 2.9, even him who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivable, deceivableness, deceive, deceivable, dece, and with all deceivable, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. There's your falling away. That's there are rewards for their their um lack of fruit, lack of trust, lack of faith. Bad, 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 and they don't care. These people don't care, and then that you know that they, they judge and criticise and condemn. If someone else is not, you know, in the same camp or it's bad, this thing will kill you. This thing will kill you. Jesus, Revelation 21.5, this is Jesus resurrected. See the right hand of God. He's come back. You know, he's come back with all authority, all power, all strength and might. And he that sat upon the throne said, this is him. He sits upon the throne. This is in Revelation. This is the end. This is the real true God. Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, write, for these words are true and faithful. Revelation 21, 6. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I'll be his God, and he shall be my son. Now listen to this, but the fearful and unbelieving. He's talking to the believers here. He's talking to people who, who he knows will be, uh, you know, either reading this or trying to be part of the um, church. And then he goes on. I mean, who's the fearful? Who's the unbelieving? The unbelievers are unbelievers. The fearful, why would he put that first? The fearful and unbelieving are rising up right now. They're the ones running to take the um, poison. They're the ones that are in the worst trouble, more trouble than, you know, than anyone even can understand, I believe. Fearful, unbelieving, and the abominable murderers, whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So he puts them to the fearful, unbelieving, first, above all those others, all the other wicked. You know, so we got to wake up. Now's the time. If you, you know, I told, I said in the last prophetic, uh, the second last prophetic word, Tasmania time is now, that the churches are under judgment, and they are, and there's no clearer way to see this than what's happening now in in Moona, in Tasmania, 
in one of the ones that are meant to be the, the uh, height of strength and, and spiritual power and holiness, righteousness and truth. <laughs> it's a joke. It's just turned into a joke and, you know, God's removing them. So oh, it's just... It's hard to believe what's going on, but anyway, stay strong. Those people that are watching, I know is uh, a lot of is, um, yeah, just be at peace. Let God direct you. Let him lead you. Just do some fasting. Pray, asking for direction. God, God, I just pray for the people that have got this far. I ask you to bless them, God. I ask you to pour your grace out on them, God. I ask you to speak to them, God. Open their ears to hear. Open their eyes to see in the name of Jesus. Put them on that straight, narrow path, that highway of holiness. God, in the name of Jesus, keep their feet from slipping, God. Keep their feet from the pits that the enemy set for their feet, God. Keep them from the nets that the enemy set for their feet, God, in Jesus' name. I pray let them not fall into the traps and snares of the enemy, God. I pray you keep them strong. Hide them under your wing as a hen hides her chicks. God, hide them in the secret place. Make them invisible to the enemy. Lead them not into temptation, Father. In Jesus' name, right now I pray you strengthen them. I pray you give them insight. I pray you give them discernment, more discernment, more words and knowledge. Let them hear your voice, the still small voice. God, give them dreams, give them visions. God, I pray, give them uh, words of wisdom, God. Father, I pray, help them, help them see, help them see in Jesus' name. Let them be covered in the, the armour of God, the armour of light. God, let them walk in righteousness, truth, in faith, increase their faith. Help them stand, help them uh, stand even right to the, till the very last minute, God, when you usually come and deliver and save. God, help them stand and not break, not fall, not for a morsel, not for a, not for a bit, bit of of a, you know, a feed, not for a bit of a, a job, not for a bit of travel, not for a bit of being able to party at the nightclubs or drink cocktails at the, the, the bars outside on the footpaths and whatever stupidity they come up with, not to think that they're going to save the world, save, their, you know, someone else getting covered because they're, they're drinking poison. I know it says in your word, that we can drink poison and it will not affect us. But not when we do it willingly, willingly, it says, God, that we shouldn't, um, you know, walk, work, walk in presumption or even assumption. we just got to help them, God. Help me too. Help us all. You protect us, God. You're our protector, our provider. You're our deliverer, our healer. You're our strong tower, God. And I just trust you. I know you're going to help us through this. I know there's good things coming. God, I pray you do separate the tears from the wheat, the sheep from the goats, God. I pray you remove the false prophets, false apostles, wolves in sheep's clothing out the door and let your uh, people shine. Let them rise up in strength, Start walking in the power of the Holy Ghost, the anointing that breaks the yoke, God. Give them, the, give them miracles and healings, the gifts of miracles and healings. Father, right now I loose it from heaven. I loose it upon you right now. I receive it, receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ, the fire of the Holy Ghost, burn up all fear, burn up all worry, burn up all doubt. The unquenchable, all-consuming fire in Jesus' name, I pray, fill them with faith and grace, God, give them favour, make them the apple of your eye in the name of Jesus. Bless them, God. Hallelujah.